Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make this Llama Happy Birthday card. It's so fun and colorful, and I'm using That's Crafty Stamps from Magna Policow, available at topflightstamps.com. They're our sponsor today, and they find the coolest stamps all over the globe and bring them back to us here in the United States. I really enjoyed the stamp line. It's very fun and doodly, and um, I think it would be great if you make a lot of kids' cards or you just like that whimsical look in your art journaling or card-making endeavors. I stamped the llama first, using Versifying Claire ink. I'm using one of the darker browns and then I'm stamping this doodle which I think kind of looks like a hill underneath the llama because I feel like it gives a little weight to the bottom of the card and gives the llama a place to stand. This doodle to me looked like it would be a wonderful sun so I'm stamping that up in the sky to be kind of a sun and um, this stamp set comes with so many different things that we're going to use in this card. Uh, I like this little blanket so I stamped that on the llama's back and I'm just eyeballing it here. You know I do um, kind of lean in and make sure I'm looking directly over my card when I'm stamping some things that really need to line up well but for the most part you can just eyeball it and it works pretty well. Now this actually vexed me for a while. I wanted to do the little banner going from cactus to cactus but I didn't have room for another cactus because the llama was already there so it kind of looks like it's attached to the llama for a while but you're going to see how I fix that later on. Now the thing I like about doodly stamps like this is that if they're not quite long enough, I tried lining it up previously and you're going to see my boo-boo at the end, um, but it was just too finicky to line it up um, and not overlap the design at all. So I just grabbed a pit pen in black and just doodled it. That dark brown by Versifying is very, or Versifying Claire is very similar to my uh, black pit pen. So I feel like they, the colors matched up really well. Now for coloring, I'm actually using some very inexpensive student grade, actually kids grade watercolor pencil. I recently received a bunch of um, Mayped brand products, back to school products to uh, review and I really enjoyed these watercolor pencils and I still had them out on my table so um, I decided to use them. That review will come along um, probably in a couple weeks, maybe next week, I'm not sure, but uh, but be definitely well before school starts. So I'm going in and coloring lightly. By the way, I stamped on hot press watercolor paper. Um, Bristol board would work really well for this or any good quality heavy weight cardstock that can take some water will work fine. So after getting those um, basic elements colored, I just went in with a fine tip brush. It's just a um, golden tacklon brush that you would use for watercolors or acrylics. And I just um, kind of uh, wet the watercolor pencil to activate the pigments. And um, after going with that first layer, I could kind of get an idea if I wanted to darken anything up. You're going to see me darken up the llama a bit throughout the process here. For the llama, I started with kind of a peach color. And then I went with some brown around the edges for some shading. Um, but you'll see when I get the background in that the llama kind of fades away, so I do end up having to darken him. Now to do little details, I find that I have a little better control with my fine tip brush, so I just use my wet brush to pick up pigment from the stick of my pencil and bring them over to the card. So that's a great way to use your watercolor pencils to give them a little more versatility. I wanted to have some hills in the background, but I didn't trust my stamping ability and my masking ability, plus it would be kind of a pain in the butt. So I decided just to freehand in some rolling sand dunes or hills. I wasn't quite sure where I was going to situate my llama, but um, I just watched a really interesting documentary about this house. It was built in the desert in the mountains in Arizona, and it was so cool that I just wanted to kind of uh, freehand it and throw in some cactuses. I decided I'd make a mini oasis by coloring the bottom of my um, hill area with some olive green and bright green watercolor pencil and then I just liquefied it and actually I kind of somehow managed to smear some ink on the bottom of that card I know very shocking uh, so I figured the green would do a better job at covering that up than my sandy tan colors and then I just did some uh, blue in the sky and I just made sure as I was going through and coloring this background that I kept recycling the same colors that way I knew everything was going to match I really like this stencil because it had so many different motifs on one stencil. I'd say it's about eight by eight. And uh, the neat thing about the stencils from the That's Crafty line is that they do have quite a few, like they have at least like two, ver two motifs on them. So if you get them and you get any stamps, I feel like everything just coordinates really well. Um, and I like being able to grab different elements and kind of stencil them in. I'm using my homemade sponge daubers, which are just a makeup wedge that you can get like a, in a big pack of the dollar store. And I fold it in half and I hot glue the ends into a bottle cap. And those 
daubers work fantastic for stenciling and the more you use them the better you get the better they get because they get saturated with ink and i've been using these daubers for probably about five years and i haven't had any of the sponges break down i think i might have had to replace the black one maybe or the yellow one because i do have my yellow one has a, has a white cap on the bottom so i think i might have replaced that one but it's really a fantastic um a fantastic DIY product that you can make and save a lot of money. Um, and now I decided to go through after stenciling with my daubers with some paint pens. And these are the Jane Davenport paint over pens and the Posca Ultrafine um, acrylic paint markers. And I just really like that because if you're building a scene like this, sometimes you change your mind as you're going through the process. And um, when you change your mind, if you're working with transparent ink, it doesn't show up. But you can go in with these paint pens and uh, cover up stuff that you've done previously. Now here in the llama, I wanted the llama to stand out and he kind of got, I don't know, sucked into the background when I did the sand. So I just went in with a darker brown watercolor pencil and I um, kind of filled them in a little bit more. The other thing I like about this, because I was going in over a little bit of paint pen and other elements, I got that rough texture that was very furry. Now here's how I'm dealing with the uh, banner that seems to be tied to our llama. I just continued the line from the first cactus banner to that cactus far away and then I just kind of looped them back and forth. Now perspectively, it is kind of odd and off but you know it it it's a card for a kid and it's whimsical so i think it's fine and then i decided to ink the uh panel with some of that dark versus fine clear ink and then i also to use that ink and my favorite happy birthday stamp that i've had for like probably 10 years uh, and i just stamped that on a little banner that i just keep a bunch of these pre-cut next to my die cutter whenever i have scraps because it's such a handy size um that die i believe is by Sizzix. Um, don't hold me to that. I just, I use it all the time, but I can't remember who it's by. It's probably discontinued. Um, and now for my envelope, I thought it'd be fun to make it coordinate and use the stencil again because it's so easy just to pick up and add designs here and there. The only thing I'm going to warn you about with using the inks and the daubers and the stencil is that when you change color, if you're going to go over the same spot in the stencil, you need to wipe it. You need to like wipe it with a wet rag. Uh, otherwise you could contaminate your ink pads and your daubers. And you don't want to do that because these daubers are reusable. There you can see my relatively new yellow one, um, and I could tell that because it's with a different color bottle cap, so I know I made it more recently. Um, but there, it's just a fun way. I mean, imagine getting that in the mail. You certainly know there's no bill in that envelope, right? So now I'm going to work on the panel here, the front panel. I'm gluing the um, happy birthday banner down there and it really stands out well because it's on white cardstock and um, I've inked the edges. Now I really wanted to embellish it so I went through my uh, brad stash which is quite generous as you probably know. I love my brads and um, I decided to use a couple primitive heart brads um, in this beautiful azure a blue color and I thought that was just the perfect little accent for this card. Um, when you are scene building you put so much time and work into your scenes that you don't want embellishments to take over you can see did you did you sneak a peek there did you see the back of my card I just want to <laughs> want to show you that you don't always stamp perfectly there was my floating in the air, air llama in my overstamped um, hill that I tried to do originally so you know what you make a mistake you flip over the cardstock and you stamp it again that happens to the best of us and I like this wide border on this 5 by 7 card I thought it looked really modern and fun now, I love this side of the envelope, but I thought, you know, I really would like to do something with the other side of the envelope, too, because it's so fun to get a real card in the mail, isn't it? And if you can make the envelope a little whimsical, too, I just think it's it's darling and sweet and fun. So I decided to stamp on that little hill and some cactuses and just kind of embellish the area where the um, address would go. And then I just doodled a little box for the return address. And um, there you have it. Please visit our sponsor, topflightstamps.com, for all the products we use. And don't forget to use the coupon code, the Frugal Crafter 10 to save 10% on your order. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this project. Until next time, happy crafting.